what's going on everybody it is march 17th day after i killed my turkey and we are heading back to the woods to try to fill our last tag we're going to be staying a couple nights out there if we don't kill one before then and hopefully we'll have some good fun hunting ahead of us we got a really big storm we're going to be rolling in tonight around 10 or 11 o'clock big old storm it's supposed to get pretty gnarly and rain for a couple hours but it's actually a front that's going to be coming through and it's going to be bringing some cool weather especially for latter end middle latter end of march tomorrow's high is only like 68 degrees it's 82 right now and tomorrow night it's supposed to get down to 36 so it's probably actually a little bit colder where i'll be but looking forward to it should be a great time we're going to deal with whatever weather is thrown our way and give it all we can so i appreciate y'all for clicking on this video got in store for us and just like that we are here getting suited up ready to chase after some thunderbirds the area i was going to go to there was a truck parked down at the end of the straightaway and it's a walk-in only area so he drove through anyways and parked right there in the in the open where you can see him from the gate so apparently he ain't too worried about game warden seeing him and going down there and having a conversation with him about being down a no drive road and just to clarify there are areas where if you have a disabled permit you can uh, drive down some of those no drive roads they're very few and far between here in Florida personally I only know of one and this ain't it so it's pretty annoying because I was going to go down there, but it's parked down there, so whatever. We're at a different spot that I've gotten some good sign intel at, so we're going to get on a bike, ride down there, and make some calls and see if we can't strike one up. Got a little bottom over here to my left, about probably 100 yards, 120 yards, and then we got a small little old food plot about 120 yards to my right. This road comes to a, a Y, so if one was to gobble, this would be an ideal spot to try to ambush him at as he's coming down one of these splits. up on this little creek here see right there and what I just showed you already it looks really nice in here for a roof spot for instance trees like that big beautiful thick pine trees that are right over the water like this definitely be some ideal stuff and it's just a small little like maybe maybe 50 yards wide of the creek but it goes for miles. It's really, they could roost anywhere as long here, but about 80 yards back behind me, I just found a set of gobbler tracks with one set of gobbler tracks with a hen. And you can just see they're following, he's following her, but I'm gonna keep on, keep on rolling, but they might end up back over here tomorrow if we don't get on anything tonight or roost anything tonight, but I don't know. We just have to see what we get into. No turkey gobble, but I did find a big old daggum bear track. You don't make that out. Pads right here. And the toes. It's a pretty good daggum bear. Well, it was a good night sleeping, especially with that rain coming through. Sounded phenomenal. But just got the last bit of rain about 45 minutes ago, and that should be it. If it starts to clear up here in the next couple hours, or really by midday time frame, early afternoon even, it should get them amped up. But hopefully they'll be gobbling this morning. I just ain't too sure about, about it with them being soaking wet turkeys right now. 
It'll probably take a minute for them to get dried off and then start hammering, especially since they, they just got rained on again. But I could be totally wrong. Hopefully they'll be gobbling. Regardless, we're about to go get after them. He's right in this bottom right here. This is where he was yes, about two days ago on the ground. That's us. We're going to make a move. We're going to go right to where I killed that one two days ago when we were close to him because I don't, it's just way too thick to get in over here, so we're going to have to make a big circle. Sorry, man, I didn't see you sitting there. Say again? Y'all looking for birds and go mess people up with sitting on birds. You in that Toyota? No, sir. You in the gray Toyota? No, sir. Are you from Georgia? No, sir. Are the three boys from Georgia? Nope. With Why the are you making a, No, sir. Why are you making assumptions? I'm just saying. You have some issues one, with Yeah. Because one of one of y'all guys are putting out bait. Definitely not me. Right here around my camp. Matter of fact, I called the game warden yesterday. Yeah. About a guy. Okay. I, I don't mean to sound harsh, but I've been messed up so many times. No, I could understand you being aggravated, Saturday but I mean. And Sunday, I yeah. almost had to beat somebody's ass at my gate. Coming in my gate with a gun, and I've got a bird right there. Yeah. And then another guy shoots, shoots a bird right here when my grandson's with me, and I'm trying to get him a turkey. He runs it off. He shoots one of these bikes right here. That's why I'm aggravated in bikes. Don't mean to be aggravated at you. Hey. But My I'm name's Austin Pope. Austin? Yes, sir. Pope. I'm Otis. Okay, so you're the one that owns this right here. Yeah. I got you. Which way did you come in? Far gate. At the you're the Dodge? Back. Yeah. In the, okay. Yeah. I seen you there, I think, last week. No, that that was a different Dodge. Oh, not last I, week. I, I'm yeah. talking about uh, Saturday. Okay, yeah. You no, I, I did pass one. He kind of looks like mine, but it's 1,500. He's got okay. 25. But I mean, I'll leave you to it, man. I ain't made no sound to him. I all hooted down the way there because I heard him. But yeah. then I pulled up here. I didn't even see your decoy till I stopped, and I was about to cut in. I was like, that aggum turkey ain't moving. I said, oh, crap, yeah. somebody's there. He's, so, still, he's still in the race. Yeah. I'll get out your hair, man. I'll head on to another one. But right, good luck to you, man. I'm sorry for being aggravated, but hey. I just, it's been a whole weekend full of shit. You know? Yeah, I can imagine them thinking it's just happening right again. But yeah. good luck to you, man. Well, there you have that bit of excitement for the, for the morning. I hope, if anything, from that conversation y'all gathered was the more correct way to handle that. Because as you've seen, or heard, hopefully heard, he came at me quite uh, agitated and made, as I asked him, why are you making assumptions? Because he's making an assumption that I'm a guy that he had some issues with whenever he said he did. I could have gotten very aggravated, which I felt it inside of me, but instead kept everything chilled out and just tried to get him calmed down and make him feel like dirt pretty much for coming at me like he did. But, uh, yeah, so I know a lot of y'all would have handled that probably a lot differently, I'm sure, but it's better just to, especially out here in the woods, loaded guns, you don't know who you're dealing with, somebody's already coming at you agitated like that. It's better just to try to calm the situation down. If things start to escalate even more, then of course you escalate with it as needed, but try to keep it chilled first. But with that, we're gonna be going trying to find another bird now since he was set up on that one. I didn't even see his setup till I got within 40 yards of him. He has a hen set up in some tall grass. I actually thought it was a hen getting up out of the grass. And I just sat there and looked at it because it's still kind of dark, but it was his one decoy he had and he was set up like 10 feet from it. But anyways, we're gonna head on and try to find another one, which we know there's plenty of them around this area. so. Go look for another one. About to make the first call. It's close to this old clear cut that the turkeys like going out into. 
kind of got some tall brown grass in it so you can't really observe it very much. You know, I'm just trying to look before you call. But the turkey's still going it. So, I'm gonna hit the call and see if we can't get something to holler back. But one thing you need to make sure you do before you make your first call is have an idea of where you're gonna set up for say that turkey hammers off. That you'll be able just to go right to it rather than call and joker just pow, sounds off and you're doing this number like where'd I go? Just a good preparation to have. And then if they don't gobble, you don't have to worry about nothing. Well, I was sitting here just looking at my map. The turkey just sounded off. Got a pin on him now. I wasn't sure. I didn't want to move because I wasn't sure which direction he was at. We got it now. I don't know if he's in this clear cut that's over there on the private side or if he's on the public. Got a bunch of different ways we could go here looking on my map. I'm not sure which one would be the best approach because there's two roads I'm on right now. One splits off this way and then the one I'm on right now. This one goes basically right to him. The other one kind of makes a loop. I'm debating if the loop might be the better option. No, we'll figure it out. At least we know we got one over there. We just ditched the bike. Still got about 300 yards to go. I would just ride it, but it's a straight shot. So I'm staying close to the edge of the road. It's pretty tall with grass, but I don't want to be just going right on in on the bike and end up spooking them. Cut off the road. I'm getting into all these short pines here. Try to keep working our way, but get out of easy view. He got one again right before I turned the camera on. I think he's on the private side, but it's being on the private side, he's standing in the road strutting on the public, which is very well possible. That's a unique spot for it. Doesn't really look like much for fish habitat in here. But we got one. There's two. There's one on the private side. On the private side and then one right here. And y'all see what I'm in here. This is good, yes. He's over here. It's just super thick in here. I've got to do just like the last trick I killed. Stuff kind of like this. Just find something that's a little bit open to get set up. Where I can have more than 20 yards of a shot. Set up right here. The base 
base of this tree. We got a lot of brush here. We got some brush here. The turkey is straight this way. What y'all don't see is everything that comes into self filming. Just trying to get on camera gear ready to roll here. That's it. <laughs> Florida season. It's over. Two hunts. I really wouldn't consider yesterday evening a hunt because I was doing more just riding around scouting than anything else. If I could stop shaking to get, get these calls in there. It's a wrap to my 2024 spring turkey season here in Florida. We still got hunts in Georgia. We got a hunt in Tennessee we're going on. So we still got a good bit of hunts ahead of us. Thank the Lord. But I'm thankful for this old fella right here. I see my wad and it's literally like two or three feet. Maybe two feet actually from where he was standing. I mean right there. I actually shot a little bit of his beard off. Not the length of it but the thickness of it. I got a few, few pellets, whacked it but that's all right and i told y'all this turkey was ready to be killed and what i meant by that was it was 8 40 some in the morning and he's just sitting in one spot just gobble 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 just hammering down i knew if i get set up on him in the right way we can make it happen and that's why i made a huge loop around him added 30 minutes of walking just to make a loop around him to get in a little bit more open here this is still thick but it's not nearly as thick as what I was in trying to get to him. And I knew it was going to be a close shot. And it was. I appreciate y'all so much for watching this video. It ain't over yet. But I, I just thank y'all so much for watching it and sticking with me. I enjoy getting to share this experience with y'all and all my memories. Obviously, I'm thankful I get to rewatch them myself. I've told them many of people. 
I love all the seasons that there are, all the hunting seasons. But when it comes to these turkeys here, they just top the rest completely. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, bird. And like I made mention in my last video, don't forget to report your turkey harvest. This is the second year now, I believe, of the requirement for having to sign in your turkeys. And I think it's a great idea. Keep track of how many turkeys are getting killed and where, and we'll be able to help manage turkeys for future generations, future years for us to be able to hunt, and hopefully have even more of them to hunt. So report your turkeys. I'm doing my paper log now, and then I have 24 hours to be able to do it on the app or call it in, either one, which will then give me confirmation number, which I'll put into my paper log, and then you're good to go. But before you move this turkey from where he's killed here in this area, before you move him, report on the paper log. His head was right here. He would have been right looking at half of my body because I was right on the second tree to the right. So then when I leaned over, that was it. What's even better, or just as good I should say, besides carrying this one on my shoulder, is while I was sneaking up on him, there was another gobbler across the property line gobbling. So hopefully he'll get to breed a lot of hens, pass his gene along, and might be here next year for me to hunt. Look what I just stumbled on. Thank you, Lord. That is awesome. That is my first shed I've ever found. It means I was toting out a turkey when I found it. Makes it even better. Well, we finally made it back to the truck. 2.8 miles later. As a total side note, these lifetime coolers right here you get from Walmart. Not endorsed by them by any means whatsoever. Walmart or Lifetime. But those coolers are awesome. If you're on the fence about getting one, because I was, do it. Because my dad has a Yeti and this is just as good as the Yeti. Like literally the exact same. So I like it a lot. The only difference is the price is way lower than a Yeti cooler is. So this is the 55 quart and I think I got it for like $115, $120. It was no more than $120, I know for sure. I want to say like $115-ish, give or take, but great coolers for sure.